Good afternoon, everybody. I hope you are hearing me well, and welcome to the first uh, of a series of three webinars uh, related to the FedEG Meta Hackathon. And we decided to call these three uh, webinars Road to Lisbon, because as you may know, um, we are organizing a hackathon that will take place uh, in Lisbon between the 23rd and 23rd of May during uh, uh, the framework of the ITS uh, European Congress. Um, today we're going to be um, talking uh, about the platform that we're using, uh, that it's going to be using during the hackathon. And today's presenter is Pierluigi uh, Freni, Dr. Pierluigi Freni, from PM from Lyft, one of the uh, partners uh, of the 5G Meta project. Uh, without further ado, I shall leave the floor to Pierluigi. Pierluigi, you have the floor. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Giuseppe. Good afternoon to everybody. I uh, hope you hear me well. Uh, so, as uh, Giuseppe was uh, uh, anticipating, uh, today uh, I'm going to uh, guide you uh, through a uh, first introduction on the 5G Meta uh, platform uh, that uh, um, is being developed within the framework of uh, the European project 5G Meta. So, um, the uh, the platform, the 5G Meta platform, is being developed by a consortium of uh, 11 European uh, partners, and uh, uh, the platform is uh, um, uh, an open data-centric uh, uh, platform that uh, um, aims at uh, um, sharing and uh, uh, distribute the uh, data that uh, are produced uh, by uh, cars and uh, uh, infrastructures in the context of uh, connected and uh, uh, automated mobility. And uh, one of the key features of, uh, of such platform uh, is the fact that uh, it benefits from uh, 5G connectivity in terms of uh, um, low, near to zero latency, actually, uh, and uh, all the uh, characteristics and innovative features uh, provided by the 5G uh, networks. Uh, to put into context, we are uh, facing uh, uh, and uh, experiencing a dramatic change in how the uh, automotive market uh, is, uh, is shaped. And if uh, um, till now, uh, let's say that uh, um, one-time vehicle uh, sales were uh, driving this kind of, uh, of market. Uh, in the near future, uh, we expect to have uh, um, a more and more predominant uh, role of data into the economics uh, of the uh, automotive market. And uh, uh, car-generated data uh, will become a market that uh, alone could uh, have a value between 450 to 750 uh, billion dollars. That's uh, that's huge, and uh, um, such a shift will be driven by uh, different uh, uh, models in uh, um, in making money out of uh, of cars in, in terms of uh, selling services on top of the car, as well as uh, subscriptions. Um, subscriptions Subscriptions models to provide such and to support uh, such a shift uh, in the market dynamics. Um, the industry uh, ecosystem will be uh, will need uh, to to adapt, and in particular, uh, new players uh, uh, will be needed and are today already needed uh, to support this uh, this shift. In particular, uh, to boost. Um, car data ecosystem. Uh, there are players uh, in the field of uh, uh, in-car technologies, that means uh, providers and suppliers of uh, uh, sensors, electronics uh, um, that uh, um, goes uh, on board of the, of the cars. Uh, and those uh, uh, come together with uh, uh, infrastructures uh, so connectivity, 5G for example, and uh, um, and other infrastructures that allow uh, the connectivity 
of uh, uh, of the car with uh, um, backend uh, structures uh, and uh, backend processes. So um, systems that uh, are, let me say, in the cloud and uh, uh, allows for the full functioning of the vehicle and uh, uh, of the services that uh, can be um, provided through uh, the vehicles and starting from the vehicles. Um, in this new scenario of the ecosystem, we will assist to, uh, if you want a, a change, a shift in how the, uh, the value chain um, is, uh, is shaped because uh, um, till a few years ago the automotive industry uh, had uh, a very let me say traditional uh, value chain that was uh, kind of linear with uh, um, uh, let's say a supply chain that uh, is very well uh, codified um, the shift to this new model of uh, uh, of providing uh, services, uh, not only cars, not only assets, uh, um, is uh, disrupting this uh, this ecosystem, and uh, uh, the the value chain of the uh, automotive industry uh, is uh, uh, taking the the shape of an hub and spoke uh, structure more than uh, let's say a linear or pyramidal structure. And within this new uh, value chain, there is uh, a space for new entrants, for uh, new uh, companies. And in particular, uh, what we are looking at are uh, high-tech uh, startups and small and medium enterprises um, that can be and can become um, key players within this new uh, ecosystem and this is uh, possible when I mean the entrance of uh, small um, small subjects uh, is made possible when uh, there is uh, a disruption in a value chain so that's uh, uh, that's a good moment for this kind of uh, um, of change uh, to happen and for these new entrants to um, uh, to, to enter the, the field, the ecosystem, and uh, uh, for them to uh, monetize and uh, um, successfully uh, say play in this uh, in this new field, um, the access to, to data that are uh, produced within the vehicle uh, is uh, um, a key element and a key success element for them to uh, to position and uh, carve out a portion of uh, of the market for for themselves and here um, on, i mean answering to this need uh, for uh, car data access uh, the 5g meta uh, project um, envisioned uh, uh, the platform uh, with the goal to facilitate uh, the development uh, and uh, deployment of uh, new services and new applications um, that uh, can allow uh, at the same time to generate revenues for some of the actors involved, especially SMEs and uh, startups, um, to reduce costs for, uh, um, let's say, traditional uh, uh, suppliers like uh, OEM, Tire, One, Two, uh, and so on, and uh, uh, to improve. Uh, what is safety and uh, and security for uh, the end users, so uh, drivers and uh, passengers and so on. So uh, with this, uh, uh, I mean, the goal is to um, put together and uh, make uh, all the car data uh, available to achieve these uh, objectives and have this impact on the uh, ecosystem. Um, what is the, the platform? Uh, the platform is, uh, um, as we, we said, um, a place actually. Uh, it's going to be um, a, a way for uh, a 
third party, uh, so it could be a startup or an SME, to um, have access uh, in a single place to uh, data that uh, can uh, be sourced from uh, different uh, uh, different sources. So it could be uh, data coming from uh, connected vehicles. It could be coming from roadside uh, units, uh, road sensors, uh, and all these uh, uh, data uh, data flow uh, will be uh, pre-processed um, and uh, made available in, uh, let's say, an homogeneous way uh, through uh, the, the platform for those third parties that want to uh, build services on top of them and uh, leveraging them. Uh, and at the same time, this will allow for um, the monetization of uh, the data that is produced uh, by vehicles and, uh, uh, and road sensors. Uh, to do so, uh, the, the platform acts uh, uh, like a, a middleware, so um, the platform gives access to um, uh, the, the data that are produced uh, within uh, vehicles uh, and uh, uh, roadside uh, units. And uh, uh, the data is made available in a streaming format, so there is no data storage within the platform. And uh, um, uh, I mean, data consumers, um, so those third parties uh, uh, developing services and uh, new applications, uh, will be able to consume and uh, to subscribe to those uh, data streams according to their needs uh, and uh, um, with, uh, uh, say, a single point of entry to have access to a multitude of, uh, of data, uh, data streams and data sources. So, uh, just to maybe be a bit more concrete, uh, we will go through some examples of uh, uh, data um, and, uh, uh, let's say, uh, some indications on, on data in this, uh, in this context. In fact, um, this is uh, um, say, uh, a directive from uh, the European um, Commission and because uh, uh, as of today, uh, data in, um, that are produced within uh, vehicles uh, and cars are uh, uh, controlled and owned uh, and exploited uh, uh, exclusively by uh, vehicle manufacturers. And this uh, uh, creates uh, a kind of uh, symmetry and uh, imbalance in the um, car data ecosystem. So um, this uh, situation uh, is, uh, um, is required to, to change. And uh, um, so th there is a, a push from the legislator in order to um, have uh, different paradigms uh, of uh, uh, data availability and accessibility uh, within the uh, automotive uh, industry. So, kind of uh, uh, removing all, those, all this power from um, vehicle manufacturers and to set a common ground for data monetization for all the actors uh, that are involved into um, the, the automotive, uh, uh, new automotive uh, ecosystem. So an ideal scenario that is pictured that of course uh, it's ideal and so uh, won't uh, uh, be realized this exact way, but uh, provides principles that uh, we can aim to, uh, to follow and address, uh, see as uh, um, the, uh, to, to ensure for uh, fair competitiveness of uh, uh, car data market to have, uh, uh, to have data with uh, uh, some specific, uh, um, some specific uh, features and uh, um, following specific uh, principles. So um, 
one of the things is uh, the non-monitoring, so um, allow for uh, uh, the data produced by the, um, the vehicles um, to be um, not necessarily monitored by the car manufacturer, so um, a form of uh, opting out from the uh, monitoring from from the car manufacturer on uh, the data that is produced by the vehicle. Um, the access to uh, the data produced by the vehicle should be uh, complete and full so that uh, um, uh, independently from what the vehicle manufacturer decides for uh, for the car, um, the data that's produced uh, by the vehicle should be accessible independently and uh, completely independent access. So to assure for for this uh, um, accessibility, also the possibility for um, third parties to um, operate their own software within the vehicle. And finally, um, also the possibility for a third party to interact directly with uh, uh, the driver and uh, the vehicles, uh, um, the people within within the vehicles through the interfaces that are, are uh, available inside the, inside the car. Of course, this is uh, an ideal uh, scenario, uh, and uh, uh, the uh, arrival point will be a uh, form of mediation negotiation between those principles and uh, the strong. Uh, um, forces and uh, uh, interests that uh, uh, the incumbent, uh, the, the current players of the uh, automotive uh, industry uh, have. Uh, but I mean, this is kind of a, a guiding light also for for the project, uh, uh, for the Fajimita uh, project and, and platform. So, uh, getting back to the data sources. Uh, um, there are, as we, we said before, uh, two major groups of uh, uh, data sources can be identified, um, and those are roadside infrastructures, so devices, hardware that is uh, installed uh, in cities, uh, along the streets, uh, at crossings, uh, and stuff like that, and uh, um, data coming from uh, vehicles, uh, so related both to the status of the vehicles and of uh, uh, its uh, occupants. And uh, uh, this data um, is made available through the platform in form of uh, data, data streams. Now we're going through some example, uh, just for you to have uh, an initial, uh, let me say, a taste of what, what uh, will be available. So, uh, as uh, far as road unit sensors are concerned, there could be uh, LiDAR sensors, so um, sensors that allows for a mapping of uh, the environment in terms of presence of objects uh, in the space uh, and uh, uh, also detection of, uh, of the free space. Uh, camera, maybe this is uh, the most familiar one. Uh, so um, camera that uh, are installed uh, in, uh, in cities will be uh, are, are able as of today to detect uh, uh, objects such as vehicles, uh, uh, people, and uh, um, and status of those uh, uh, of those uh, objects, uh, as well as the, the uh, dynamics. Of uh, so how they move uh, into into the settings. Uh, then there could be <coughs> other sensors, um, so temperature, pollution, uh, light, and, and things like that. So environmental sensors, and uh, also other source of data. Uh, so for example, if we look at uh, uh, crowded spaces uh, um, that are uh, important for mobility, like uh, uh, train stations or uh, um, bus stations, stuff like that. Also, monitoring the presence of people through Bluetooth, through Wi-Fi, uh, is another uh, another thing that uh, can uh, um, other sensors that can collect data to be fed. 
uh, through the, the 5G Meta platform. Uh, when we move to the vehicle, um, in vehicle sensors are mostly, uh, I mean, related to the uh, ECU, the electronic control unit. So the electronics uh, um, controlling the, the cars, the car, um, and so um, we can have uh, uh, data um, related to the engine and to the status of uh, uh, the, the vehicle, uh, as well as the dynamic. Of, uh, of the vehicle in terms of speed uh, and uh, uh, and those data that can be used to uh, infer the driving um, behavior of uh, of the driver. Uh, other vehicle sensors uh, um, can be related to the maintenance status of uh, of the vehicle itself and can um, highlight if uh, any kind of uh, intervention is needed on uh, on the vehicle. Um, and uh, this is uh, uh, maybe more new, but uh, uh, the monitoring also of the driver status. Uh, to check that he or she is uh, uh, in the best condition uh, to to drive the vehicle. That uh, so uh, sensors that are able to detect uh, uh, any uh, drowsiness uh, risk uh, and stuff like that. All those uh, uh, in vehicle uh, sensor can fed uh, can be fed to. Uh, the data coming from the sensors uh, can be fed into the uh, the platform. And uh, another uh, set of sensors that are vehicle related, but uh, are not uh, uh, in vehicle, but our own vehicle. So as uh, uh, autonomous driving is, uh, um, uh, I mean, the different levels uh, is uh, uh, becoming uh, more uh, common um some form of autonomy let me say uh cars are uh, equipped with uh, uh, new external sensors like cam cameras uh, lidar radar uh, and gps so um, the vehicles themselves can be uh, used as a source of data for environmental uh, data and uh, and characteristics and this, uh, um, just just closing the uh, overview on uh, uh, what kind of data um, you can be able to uh, to find within uh, uh, within the platform. Uh, yeah, and that's all. Um, as uh, as Giuseppe was saying. Uh, this is uh, uh, the first of three uh, webinars that we uh, have arranged and organized. So uh, the next one, uh, the next two uh, will be uh, more technical. So uh, to show you a bit more in detail uh, how you will be able to interface with the platform and how you will be able to use uh, data and data streams uh, are made available on the platform and they will be in the uh, in March and April. Uh, we will uh, uh, send you the details of those two uh, further events. And uh, uh, I mean, with the information provided uh, uh, in this and the coming two webinars uh, uh, are intended for you to have clearer and more complete picture to join us uh, in Lisbon uh, for the uh, 5G Meta Hackathon. Uh, the Hackathon. During the Hackathon, participants will have the possibility to be am among the first to have access to the platform and to play around and uh, uh, use the software components of the platforms and have access to data streams uh, available on uh, on the platform. Um, the Hackathon is a competition, so we will uh, evaluate the uh, projects uh, and the prototypes uh, developed during the, the Hackathon and the first three uh, teams will be uh, awarded with an overall price of uh, uh, 5,000 uh, uh, euros. 
and uh, uh, also participants will have the chance and the, the, the opportunity to uh, enter uh, for free the uh, ITS European Congress and so to meet uh, a network with the relevant people from the industry uh, and uh, with investors as well. So for any question you may have, uh, I think you can use uh, uh, the, uh, the chat box. Uh, maybe Giuseppe can help us in, uh, in that. Thank you. Thank you, Pierluigi. Of course, if you are more comfortable into asking questions uh, by raising your hand and asking to open the mic, there's no problem with that. So you can uh, go ahead. But let's see if there is any question from the chat. Bar? Could we give you the time to tap it, tap it out. So far, seeing none. Is there anyone from uh, the audience that wants to raise their hand and ask for uh, any question on the platform or in the uh, to the Adkaton itself? Uh, there is a question, uh, Pierluigi, from uh, Luca Cinti. How many people will form a team? Uh, yeah, um, let's say that we are not that strict on that. Uh, ideally, it would be four or five people maximum for a team, but um, it's, uh, I mean, uh, it depends a lot on uh, how you want to approach the, the competition. Uh, we already had uh, uh, one hackathon organized uh, in uh, last year, and we had uh, teams uh, with, uh, a part I mean, with a number of participants spanning from two up to six. Um, so it's quite open and uh, uh, you can uh, come to the hackathon with your own team or um, you can uh, find other peers during uh, the initial phases of the hackathon and uh, uh, build team or uh, join an existing team uh, right there on uh, uh, the at the beginning of uh, of the event. Thank you very much, Pierluigi. Still uh, from uh, Luca, we ask uh, he asked it also. Uh, if uh, can uh, if the people coming from the same company can be part of the same team and we, if the solution will be made public after the hackathon uh, yeah, there is no problem in having um, I mean, people from the same company belonging to the the same team and uh, in terms of uh, uh, let me say publicity of uh, uh, the results of the hackathon um, let me say that uh, uh, yeah there will be um, uh, say a public release of uh, what has been done during the hackathon of course uh, if uh, uh, you believe that uh, um, there is uh, uh, any kind of sensitive information or uh, you believe that you want to keep some elements of uh, what you developed uh, um, private and confidential that's something that we can accommodate of course Thank you very much, Pierluigi. I hope that we answered all uh, Lucas' questions. Uh, thanks, <laughs> there are, there are many thanks. Thank you, thanks to you for your questions. Is there any other questions from the from the audience? seem none so uh, in this case i would like to thank uh, oh we have it uh, right. from andrea gavrile gavrielides i'm going to apologize for the mispronunciation where can we find more info on how to best tailor our solution to the platform 
Uh, all right, so the, let, let me say the first reference is for sure uh, the uh, 5G Meta project website. Uh, so let me see if I have it uh, here somewhere uh to share no but i think that we can follow up with an email with a specific link but just uh if you google 5g meta project uh it's uh, it's the first result and uh, uh in the upcoming webinars uh we'll dive more into the technical details uh and uh, um, the technical documentation as well of, uh, of the platform that uh, uh, will be made available uh, also before the, the Akaton itself. So um, uh, this is something that is, uh, let me say, in progress as a, a development, uh, from a development standpoint. So, but I mean, the, uh, all the uh, updated information are available on the, the website of the project. Speaking of which, I uh, just okay. shared in the chat uh, the link of the website, so you can always uh, have a look. Uh, and also from there, you can also find the page uh, related to the hackathon and uh, uh, proceed with the registration to the hackathon if you haven't done it yet. Um, in the meantime, uh, I will ask uh, once again if there is any other question from you. <laughs> Thank you, Andreas. Uh, Bilal Amamu uh, is asking, data will be from real RSU, roadside unit, and or OBU uh, onboard unit on field? I hope uh, uh, you understood. Uh, yeah, 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 totally. Um, uh, okay, yes, actually, we have uh, um, three uh, pilot uh, uh, locations, let me say, in the project that uh, um well with uh, connected vehicles uh, and uh, connected uh, um, road infrastructure so there will be real data available and streamed during uh, during the hackathon uh so there won't be uh, large scale but uh, uh let me say they're gonna be coming from three different uh, pilot sites uh, uh, so they're gonna be real uh, real data and uh, yep. Yeah. Okay, amazing. Thank you very much. Thanks, uh, uh, Bilal. Um, so I'm, I'm happy to see that there are questions coming up which means that uh, you are interested and engaged in uh, what we are presenting uh, today and um, I wonder, to you, I wonder if there is another question from you. Maybe you can have a one last question. Okay, this time seems that it seems like that there are no other questions. So I, in this case, I would like to thank you, all of you to participate. And I hope you're gonna, are gonna see you, we are gonna see you, pardon, in uh, the, our next webinar and uh, hopefully in Lisbon. And I would like to thank also Pierluigi for uh, today's uh, presentation on the platform. And uh, I think it's uh, time. If for I may, may yeah, please thing. go ahead. Uh, Absolutely. Yeah, the registrations, because uh, we are uh, we have opened the registrations for the Akaton already a few weeks ago, so uh, spots are limited. Uh, so it's important if you are interested in to uh, joining us uh, uh, in the Akaton to hurry up, because uh, I mean, uh, uh, places are, uh, are consuming fast. So don't wait uh, the last minute to uh, to register for the Akaton because uh, it could be too late just that yes indeed uh, it will be too late but uh, they can find all the information on the website but they can also mm -hmm. just land on the eventbrite uh, we created where they can also uh, register straight ahead and um, give also a little bit more info about themselves uh, in the, during the process. Um, 
also this this um, webinar has been recorded and it will be also available on our website on 5gmeta-project.eu. So I guess we are now at the final uh, steps of our webinar and I would like to thank again all of you and I would like to thank Pierluigi and I wish you a nice rest of the afternoon. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thanks everybody. Bye-bye.